Shalom Alechem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Pax Wobiskam. Peace be unto you. Welcome to 1 Samuel chapter 16, or first book of the kingdoms. There are 23 verses in this chapter. Beginning in verse 2, we have what we call today a white lie. Uh, not that it's a sin, it's just what we call today a white lie. Let's look in the Septuagint. And Samuel said, How can I go to anoint a king? Whereas Saul will hear of it and slay me. And Adonai said, Take a heifer in your hand, and you shall say, I am come to sacrifice to Adonai. So we can see that Adonai is covering for him, although his mission is to anoint one of the sons of Saul to be the new king. So is this a sin? No, it's not a sin. If you're protecting a life or you're, you're on a mission from Adonai. Verse 4, there's a significant difference here. It says here that the elders of the city were amazed at meeting Samuel. Versus the elders of the town trembled at his coming. So were they afraid of him? No, they were just amazed. They're in awe of meeting uh, Samuel, the prophet of Adonai. Uh, verse 5, we have a significant difference once again. It says here, Rejoice with me this day. Uh, Samuel talking to Jesse. Verses, Come with me to the sacrifice. So it's not simply come and watch or accompany me. Rejoice with me. Be joyful. Uh, verse 7, uh, appearance, so Adonai does not look, or I should say he's telling Samuel, do not look on his appearance, and the Masoretic, do not look at his face, his countenance. So it's more than just his, just his face, it's head to toe, it's his, his full appearance. Uh, there's an omission of Elohim sees, okay? Yes, it says that here, but that's not originally there. That's an insertion. Okay, anything in the brackets. And usually if it's uh, italic, not italic, is that? Yeah, I think it's italic as well. Uh, it is inserted. In verse 11, the question that Samuel asks Jesse have you no more sons? So specifically a male child. Verses are here, are, are here all your children. So he's talking about not just the males, but even the daughters. Doesn't make sense because he's anointing a king, not a queen. Uh, my question in regards to this story, this account, is how old was Dawid or David? Because children who tend flocks are prepubescent. Okay, they, I'm going to say as young as, I have to be careful here. <laughs> I'm going to say as young as a child can know how to walk. Okay, it's a simple task, but they must have some sort of wisdom as well. So let's just say five years old, okay, for the sake of argument, as young as five perhaps. It's a good estimate, 5 to as old as uh, 11, 10, 11 years old, depending on when uh, boys went through puberty at that time. Let's just say 5 to 12, for sake of argument, okay? So perhaps David was between that age, as we're reading this account, that's how old he most likely is. That's why he was not presented before Samuel uh, to be anointed king or be a potential candidate to be king. Notice in verse 12, Jesse's or David's appearance, Dawid, he was ruddy, and a lot of people interpret that to mean red haired or ginger, with beauty of eyes, not a beautiful countenance, not that he doesn't have a beautiful face, but it's talking about his eyes. Focusing on that particular, uh, particularly, and very good 
goodly to behold. So eyes, face, body, just all around a handsome, good-looking young lad. Okay, and there's an omission of very goodly. He's not just, okay, he's goodly. No, he's very goodly, ex ex exceptional. Not just good-looking, but above average, and perhaps even above average. <laughs> above, above average. A big difference here in verse 12 is uh, the statement Adonai says to Samuel in regards to Dawid, Arise and anoint Dawid, for he is good. Notice in the Masoretic, arise and anoint him. So it's not as personable. Adonai knows his name. He's been born for this purpose. Notice that. Uh, he knows all our names even before we're born. He knows our new name. And he doesn't say he is good here, just this is he. So we can see, no, Adonai can see his heart. And he is good, according to Adonai. In verse 14, we notice a, a continual difference of tormented, the evil spirit from Adonai tormenting Saul, versus troubling him. He's tormenting him. He's like persistently torturing him. Uh, verse 16, another significant difference. Let your servant speak before you. The servants of Saul asking permission, can we speak? Allow us to speak, permission to speak, essentially, is what they're saying. And the Masoretic, let our Adon now command your servants. So it's not them asking permission to speak. They're, they're telling King Saul, give us a command, essentially. And that, that's why I call it a significant difference. There's an omission of, he shall refresh you. Uh, the man who plays skillfully in the harp. So my question, another question in regards to this account. Now we know that earlier in the chapter, when Samuel anointed Dawid initially, he was, by my estimations, between the ages of five to as old as 12. However, uh, time has elapsed from verse 13 uh, actually, even before that, verse 12 to verse 14, because that's a, this is a different paragraph and a different... Uh, we fast-forwarded in time, okay? Because they're looking for a man, not a boy. So uh, he's no longer called a little one, but now is called a man. Um, perhaps he's from ages... Let's just say 12, as young as 12 to as old as 20. And we see in verse 18, describes Dawid as a valiant, uh, a mighty, valiant man in the Masoretic, but he is a man. Okay, so that's an addition, but he is a man. They call him a man. Perhaps he wasn't technically a man, but looked like a man, had the appearance of a man, so they called him a man. In any case, he's at least a teenager, so he's hit puberty. He's probably, again, between the ages of 12 to 20, uh, but they describe him as a man. There's another omission of that he is wise in speech. That's an important uh, detail because he is a wordsmith. He writes uh, psalms with very deep lyrics. Okay, he has that ability that Adonai has gifted gifted him with. Uh, verse 20, it says, Omer, or Homer of bread, versus uh, a donkey laden with bread. Verse 21, uh, it says, Dawid went in to Saul and stood before him. Dawid stood before him, and he loved him greatly. Uh, I understand this as Dawid loved Saul greatly, and he, uh, David, or Dawid, became Saul's armor bearer, okay? So it's all, we can see how Dawid is usually the first individual mentioned, then Saul's the second. So that's how it can be understood that it's Dawid standing before Saul, that Dawid is loving him, loving Saul greatly, 
and becoming Saul's armor bearer, okay? So that's verse 20, uh, 21. Verse 23, there's an omission of evil spirit. It's not just the spirit, it's an evil spirit. Again, that denotes it was added. It's not an original, but this is an original in the Septuagint. Also in verse 23, this is the last verse of, of the chapter, significant difference uh, because this is David's own harp. It says his harp. This, this is his own custom harp, most likely his own instrument, most likely customized for his playing style. And uh, he was familiar or accustomed to it, whereas uh, just a harp not his harp, would imply that it's a generic harp. It was something, an instrument that he was not familiar with or accustomed to and was not custom-made for his, for him in his playing style. Um, and I'm going to also assume he probably tuned it to his favorite uh, tuning, however he tunes his harp. So that's all for this chapter of 1 Samuel 16. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we have some very massive differences ahead in the next two chapters, so uh, look forward to that. It's about the battle between David, David, and Goliath, the Philistine. So thank you very much uh, for your time. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Shalom Alechem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Paxwell Biscom, peace be unto you, and Maranatha.